Welcome to another episode of the Relationship Series. My name is Sam Spatero. And I'm Gina Spatero. And today's topic is intimacy. Yes, it is. And just to briefly describe to you, you know, our first initial response to intimacy is the physical aspect of it all. And it's, you know, people's perception of it being sex. And yes, it is a huge component of intimacy and a huge uh, factor in the longevity of relationships as well. However, there's two components. So there's the emotional and then there's the physical. And obviously women are more attached to the emotional. However, it's not that they do not um, need and feel a uh, desire to have the physical. Of course it's needed. But if the needs and the intimacy and the emotional state aren't being met, then it's just as unsatisfying as if a man's needs physically aren't being met. So those are just the two uh, things. And also intimacy doesn't just mean, um, you know, having that close closeness in bed. It's a bond. It's that bond and connection that is built over time. It's with someone that you feel safe, someone that you feel compatible. You know, they were saying in a, a psychology study that People who know each other best, it's not a default. It's actually um, a safety measure in knowing, you know, when your other partner needs you because you can tell when they're off. You can tell yeah. um, if their mood has changed and, you know, if there's something that you can do as their significant other to help them. And so those cues alone are bonded by time and also... Um, just a commitment to one another, right? So I think they're super essential. And I want to start off with this quote that I took from Esther Perel. And Esther Perel is a world-renowned uh, relationship therapist. Yes. And it goes something like this. Very often we don't go elsewhere because we're looking for another person. We go elsewhere because we are looking for another self. It isn't so much that we want to li leave the person we are with as much as we want to leave the person we have become. So I think it's really essential that we touch base on a few key things. Mm -hmm. One, what happens with the loss of intimacy in a relationship? Where does it go? And two, what can people do to recreate it and um, bring much more of it in? And it's such a common thing. I can remember when I was younger and working with some older people, some were married, some were divorced, some have been married three years or three times is what I mean. And all of them pretty much all had the same thing hmm. to say. And it was, you know what? My wife or my girlfriend always says it's like a chore. Yeah. Um, you know, all I ever do is want it all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and when you would hear it from women, all the most common thing is all he ever wants is sex. Yeah. Right? So I think really what it comes down to is what is it we all really need? Yes. And what creates a healthy relationship intimacy mm -hmm. for the long term where both needs are being met mm -hmm. you know so some key things that um i wrote down uh, that really play in the loss of intimacy and the reduction in it is one key thing is not enough time so what that really essentially means is is you don't value each other's time any longer in the beginning you valued the way the person's skin was their eyes the way their hair moved, the clothes that they wear, the smell, um, every waking second you could spend with them, you couldn't wait. There was always that anticipation because it was so new and fresh, right? But as time progresses, you start to not to appreciate one another. And you can also start to take people for granted. Mm -hmm. And the person you're with in your relationship is the one person you don't ever want to take for granted. They should be your everything. So number one, that can create uh, the loss of intimacy. Number two is not enough energy. And this really has to do with your physiology, the state that you're in. You know, I, I like to translate this into um, when you're at a peak state, whether you're, you're doing a sport or you're with some friends and you're sharing some things that you're really connected with, you're breathing in deep, you feel really alive, you're connected. And this is also plays out in the beginning of relationships. Mm -hmm. You're excited to see the person, you can't wait, you're telling your friends. And as time progresses, your physiology changes, mm -hmm. your state changes, you start to become lazier. You might start to eat a little unhealthier. One thing for most men that I know, they stop doing sports. 
-hmm. women stop spending less time with their friends yeah. and what happens is, is you lose these connections these things that keep you in tune with your physiology and keeping to a good state because as you know there's so many good chemicals that get released into our bodies from mm -hmm. our brains when we're in peak states that you can bring the best of you to your partner right. but when your partner um, essentially becomes everything and you've shut down all these other things that keep you alive you're, it's impossible for you to be in a state where you can give your best to the person. And this has a huge impact on the reduction of intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, the third thing is you can have a loss of interest. And where does a loss of interest come into play as the relationship progresses? Well, it can be career-based. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe in the beginning you're working a little less, but as time progresses, you want to make more money, you want to advance, you want to feel more significant. So you start to take on greater roles at work or taking new courses. And when you come home, your person is getting the leftovers, you know, and that can have a huge part. Kids is a huge one for someone who is a father of three. You know, when you first start out as a family, it's always just you. Right. But as children progress, you know, and you see this a lot in pictures with families is the parents on the outside and the kids are in the middle. So, Putting your kids before yourselves can create a loss of intimacy because by nature you start to think that you're second best to everything right, else right. or everyone else, whether it's your family, your friends, you know, at a drop of a hat, you do anything for them. But we're used to do this for one another in the beginning. That's not even a thought. Right. Um, and the fourth thing that I want to end with is having the wrong knowledge. Um, in the beginning, it's so fresh, it's so new, you're intimate. But then what happens by habit is you start to take on some trained knowledge that was given to you from family, from friends, from media, uh, from coworkers, and then you become the average of the very best of those who you right. associate with. And you become just like, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if you ever watched the Truman show where mm -hmm. everybody wakes up at the same time, they, they you know, they talk about the same things, they get in the car the same way, and all you're essentially doing is you're destructing that level of intimacy by the exact same ways and the conditioning that you were shown. Right. You know, so these can have a very big impact on the things that can create loss in a relationship. And I, I want to ask you a question. Sure. If there was one thing that, you know, you could do today mm -hmm. that or share, maybe share with somebody that can completely change and I'm sure there's people right now struggling with this and it, and it could be having a big impact on whether or not they're going to stay loyal to the person they're with, or maybe they're thinking about ending a relationship. And it's really not that, you know, it's going to get better with someone else. It can get better with right. no. the person they're with. What tool can you give them today mm -hmm. where they feel like they can go home and it's a, it's a game changer? Um, I think, and it's so funny because I mean, and here I'm stating because every relationship takes work and it's reinventing yourselves all the time yeah. because you're not the same person you were when you first met that person. You're always growing. You're always learning. You're always, you know, creating the new version of who you once were. And in those pockets and in those moments, you're going to feel that distance, you're going to feel the change. And it's those check-ins that matter. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes in those check-ins, we tend to take things personally. And I think you really have to eliminate the fact of taking it personally because you have to internalize what the other person's saying and saying, oh, you know, I slipped here a little bit. Yeah. How can I bring this back because it matters to my partner? And, and that's just human nature. Sometimes we get comfortable and, and things happen and life gets busy, but have those moments where your partner is feeling lack and you're able to just listen. Okay, so ready? Three things yeah. that you could give men <laughs> to bring more intimacy into the relationship and have a love slave. Yeah. Three key things, what are they? And let's keep them simple. Okay. Um, I think when you are having a conversation with your significant other, your lover, your partner, your girlfriend, wife, whatever she may be in your life, one key thing is that women 
are emotional beings. And it's sometimes very difficult for men to understand and relate because yes, we do talk a lot. And, it's and we don't. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's the decoding part. That's right. Right. And sometimes at the end of a conversation, it's not about a rebuttal. It's just about listening. It's just. And I think that's the key thing. And I just, I want to <laughs> add a point to this. I, I remember hearing a story from a world round, renowned uh, relationship uh, person and professional. And he said, he actually asked a guy in the crowd yeah. of a thousand people and said, when a, you're, you're driving with your lady in the car and she asks you if you have to pee. Right. And she, and you say no. What does she really mean? That she has to go. That she okay. has to go. So women don't say what they mean. Right. Men sure. do. Right. 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 And, it, and that's the whole covert over communication. We're just wired that way. And it's a trained way to be. I mean, if you grew up with two overt communicators in yep. the family, that's going to be what what you know but if you weren't then you're just going to fall to your innate way of communicating um a second thing i would have to say is and i think this goes for both partners is show gratitude show gratitude yeah, 100%. For the little things. you know i'm very lucky where you know i love to cook and i love to clean and i love to do all of those things and you know, my boyfriend is very good at responding with gratitude and I appreciate that 100%. And I even just know that it, it's, it comes from a place of gratitude. So just in little moments, sharing gratitude for the little things even, right? And the third thing is creating time for just you, you two. You know, bringing it back to what once was because even if it's going out for lunch, even if it's, you know, saying, um, this night, don't plan anything. It's just for us, you know, and it's just creating that connection because it matters because things do get busy business, you know, uh, incorporates in your lives, other people incorporate into your lives, family, friends. But I think keeping that, you know, that connection between you two weekly is, is very important. So those are some really, really, really good takeaways. Mm -hmm. And I think really one thing I'd like to add to that, I mean, if you want to have amazing intimacy and you mm -hmm. want to have your person serve you, one key thing is trust. Yeah. Like, you know, if you are the type of individual that has trust issues in a relationship, that will ruin your intimacy. That will, ru will ruin the spark, the connection mm -hmm. that the person has for you. Like. You know, for my for myself, like with my wife, I've made a commitment to her, which is essentially whatever you want to do in your life, I love and I support you because I want to be part of your happiness. I want to be part of your journey, your adventure. And I want nothing more for her to support me with every endeavor and in which she has always done. Mm -hmm. And there is not a greater euphoric feeling to know that you have the support from the person that loves you the most. Yeah. And so some key takeaways that I want to give you ladies uh, things you can do with your men to really have a huge impact yeah. on them and make them just feel like they will do want to do anything for you is number one, make them feel like your world cannot exist without them. And man, there's a reason why men's suicide rate is like three times higher than a woman. There's a reason why men today, um, and I've felt this at times right. too, where you almost feel like there's an identity crisis, you know, because, you know, you're very existent, uh, dependent on us at one point. So if you really want your man to feel really connected to you and serve you and love you, and you really want to just create more intimacy, make him feel like he's your king. Yeah. Like just jump all over the fact, like even on like the littlest things and accomplishments that he does, really just show mm -hmm. gratitude and appreciation and make him feel like your world would not exist without him. And I will guarantee you, a hundred percent. I have done this with many of my clients that I've coached. Overnight, things change, and I can tell you with my relationship with my wife after twenty years, things change automatically because what happens is you get connected to them uh, physiologically as well as emotionally. One key thing that I'm going to tell you is I think is just as important as the first one is have your husband's back first over everybody else. I mean, your mother your father, your brother, sister, your friends, your colleagues, have his back. Mm -hmm. You have to support him 
and love him, even though you might not completely agree, but let him know that you're behind him 100,000%. There's nothing worse than being in a relationship and being with somebody who's always questioning you. Mm -hmm. Or if you're out in public, you're not supporting him and making him look like a fool in front of people. Even though you may not agree with it, show that you support him 120%. My whole question is, would you do that to a colleague? Would you do that to someone you really care about, but yet you're gonna shame or not back your man in the public or against your own family or friends? Right or wrong, you made the decision to be with him, support him 110%, and let me tell you, you will take the intimacy to a whole nother level. And what I mean by that from a female perspective is emotionally. He's gonna find ways to light you up like never before and on a more consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And I think I wanna pretty much end with that because yeah. we have left them not only with the things that I think can cause a loss of intimacy, right. we've also given you some value tools on things that can create more intimacy as well. For sure. So that being said, uh, please don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe and the notification bell to uh, get further notifications when our new episodes are released. So any keynotes that you want to say before we sign off? All right. And I do want to end it with this quote that I uh, took down from Tony Robbins. Some of the biggest challenges in relationships come from the fact that most people enter a relationship in order to get something they're trying to find someone who's going to make them feel good. In reality, the only way a relationship will last is if you see your relationship as a place that you go to give and not a place that you go to take away. Mm -hmm. So if there's one thing that you want to do in your relationship to create more intimacy is be selfless. Yeah. Give everything you have, no matter how frustrated or angry you are, go into a place of service and you will create a dynamic and a relationship that will withstand the test of times. And I just want to end on that. And if you are going to dream today, I dare you to dream big.